Hi all, welcome back to the Code Mental channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can deploy WordPress on Kubernetes in a Google Cloud platform. Let's get started. So today I'm going to be following a guide uh, on the Google Cloud, which uh, shows you how you can easily deploy WordPress on Kubernetes. This is the guide. I'll put the URL on the description in the video so you can follow it as well. So why would I deploy uh, WordPress on Kubernetes, right? There's a few reasons to do that, right? First thing is you, if you don't only have one site and you have multiple sites, it makes sense to, uh, to uh, deploy lots of WordPress sites on the same Kubernetes cluster. A Kubernetes cluster has, uh, well, the, the Kubernetes cluster I'm going to use today only has three instances, but uh, a Kubernetes cluster can grow over time, so you can add more nodes to it. Uh, this guide is very rough because there are certain elements here that uh, are not really discussed that uh, later on when you actually, if I was trying to make this uh, production ready, I would have to optimize certain things. Like uh, one limitation I know that there is a limited number of persistent disks you can uh, create for the same cluster, uh, in fact, for the same node. So we're going to be using persistent disks. Ideally in one node, you would run something like a hundred websites at the same time. But with this limitation, you could only run 40, but there's ways to get around it. I'm not going to mention it today, but I think today the, the, main, the main objective is just to show you how you can easily you know, deploy a website using some default templates that are available in this tutorial. And you can do that so easily, okay, that uh, I'm going to do this probably, it's going to take me, well, 15 minutes without, if I wasn't doing any talking, right? So let's get started. So first things first, you need to have a Google Cloud account. I have one already. So I'm going to my console. And I'm going to create a project just for this. And the idea behind creating a project is that if I want to do it at the end, it's much easier. So I'm going to create a project for my WordPress test. So I've created the project. So first thing it asks me here is to activate the cloud shell. Go do that. So the cloud shell is here on the top right, this icon here, which I'm clicking on. The cloud shell is great because you actually have your own VM, or let's call it something. It's probably a Docker container, but the point is, it's, um, it's, your, it's a way for you to actually uh, run any commands and you can interact with all the, the services in uh, Google Cloud without having to install in your local computer all the different tools, the toolkit that you normally get. So it's really easy to get started. So I'm already um, by default using the correct project, but if I wasn't, I would have to um, change the project ID with this command here that you can see. Okay, so, so let's just go back to the guide. And what is actually telling me now this uh, instruction here is to enable the two APIs I'm going to need. I'm going to need to enable the container API for uh, enabling Kubernetes. And uh, I need to enable the second API with SQL admin.google APIs to be able to use Cloud SQL. Okay. Wow, well, that's, uh, that's running. The next thing I need to do. So this next instruction here, gcloud config set compute zone and the zone. This is so you can choose the region that you want to run this on. I don't really mind so much. So I'm going to just take the default region that they show here. There's a few regions in the Google Cloud and you just need to pick the one uh, that is most suitable to you. Could be based on the geographical location. For instance, if you want your servers to run in Europe, then you can choose a region within Europe. Uh, and that could be important for GDPR and data protection. So you need to uh, you need to think carefully of where you're going to put your server. Okay, so now I've enabled the two APIs, and now I'm going to set my compute zone to the correct one. And my compute zone is going to be US West One A. By the way, I'm using Google Cloud account, and when I actually signed up for this Google Cloud account, I was able to get. 300 US dollars free to just try out. Um, you will be able to, to benefit from the same if you sign up to the, for a Google Cloud account. And uh, another secret I found out recently, if you try to use GitLab in integration with uh, 
uh, Google Cloud, you get an extra 200. So you could actually get 500 US dollars free to spend to learn something about Kubernetes or do whatever you want. I mean, it, it, it doesn't expire for a year. Right, so I have set my compute zone. Now I need to save my project ID. My project ID should be here. So I have this project ID here. So I'm going to copy that to Yeah, so I've, I've saved it into a variable and exported it. So I need to now download the Kubernetes engine sample. Okay, I already have it from before. So. Okay, so let's just have a quick look in the GitHub repository so you have an idea what is in there. Okay, so it's really important to understand uh, some of these configuration files because it can be overwhelming uh, Kubernetes. Okay, volume claims. Volume claims are basically uh, description files that uh, basically tell Kubernetes if an application, uh, what kind of storage does an application need and how much it needs. And there is, if you go into the Kubernetes documentation, you'll find uh, a multitude of options in terms of storage providers and different access modes. So a persistent volume claim is basically, it's just a, it's basically a request for creating a storage, a volume, a persistent volume. So here I'm describing the name of the volume, the access mode, read, write once, this means that this persistent volume is only available to one pod at the same time. And then here I specify also the storage that I need. Okay, so just now I've mentioned MySQL. Uh, MySQL had a volume claim, a, pr a persistent volume claim, which is basically a request to storage. WordPress itself also needs uh, a persistent volume. And this persistent volume is to store things like the uploads and the WP content folder. If you have worked with WordPress, you'll know what that is. But basically, this needs to be persistent and available to the pod when it's running. And here we also ask for 200 gigs, which I think for a small site is a bit over the top. But you know, this is just an example. Again, access nodes is read write once. Okay, so let's have a look at the actual pod itself. So this is the actual description file to create the, the pods that we need. We are going to be running the database on the Cloud SQL service. So we don't need the pod, uh, we don't need the container for that. So all we need is basically one container, which is going to be running WordPress. And for this container, we're going to be using the default Docker image WordPress that you can find on the Docker, uh, on the Docker hub, basically. And uh, this is actually running on Apache server, I believe. And there is like, I've used it so much. It's, there's a lot of documentation on it and there's a lot of people using it. So it's reliable. So what this um, pull, you know, this, this is basically a pod, it's running one container only, and this container itself is actually using a secret key reference. So we're not actually storing passwords directly on this file, so we're going to create a secret key in Kubernetes to do that. Okay, I'm going to come back to this file while I'm creating the Kubernetes cluster, because that can take a bit of time, so I might as well use that time to explain to you how things work. So I've already cloned the project, and now I'm going to create the persistent disks. Persistent disks here. CD. So I need to save the working directory in a variable, and now. I need to create the class itself, and this is the easiest part. So the cluster name, I'm going to just leave the default name. So that this is why it's creating a variable here. And then it calls the gcloud container classes create, which is going to create you a, a cluster with three nodes. Okay. Now press enter, and now this is going to take three to five minutes. So in this description file, which you'll see a lot in Kubernetes, we're describing our pod. We're describing which containers we want to run inside the pod. So one pod can run more than one container. And uh, typically you group things together. They're always, basically it's almost like siblings, right? They're always together 
if uh, you have more than one container and they both need to run along each other and then they scale more or less in the same way. So in this case, we have one replica, but let's say we have 10 replicas, then you need 10 containers of this. And then if you had another container, you would need also 10 containers of that. Here I specify any volumes um, mounts. So using the volumes that I'm going to create, you know, using those persistence volume claims, it will create the volume. And then here you can specify where you want this volume to mount in, in your container. So you specify which directory you want. So for uh, WordPress, it's going to be var www.html. Cloud SQL. We are going to be using Cloud SQL as a, a database provider. And this is a Cloud SQL proxy. You know, one thing that uh, it's important to mention about Cloud SQL, and for those who want to run WordPress on the latest version of, of MySQL, is that Cloud SQL currently only supports version of SQL 5.7. I heard, well, I saw some in one forum that uh, Google is going to launch, is going to launch version 8 sometime next month. Okay, we can create the volume claim. But before I do that, I just want to show you that I don't have any volume claims, first of all. So I don't have any pods in the default namespace and uh, everything in Kubernetes works with namespaces. And I don't have PVC, which is the persistent volume claim. And then if I wanted to have any, if I had any volumes, it would be persistent volume. Okay, so nothing there. Now I can create one. So I'm just applying that YAML file that we just saw. And now we can create our persistent volume claim. So if I'm really quick, then I'll be able to show you how it looks like. Okay, it's already created it so fast. So I've created a per persistent volume claim. So if something went wrong, I would typically use this command, describe. So that gives me an idea. It would, if it didn't work properly, it would have a, an error message on here, and it would give me a clue of what's going on. But everything went ran smoothly, and I have now a persistent volume in in the default namespace. You see this here. The, this version of the command is with much more characters than what I've written. I've I've just used the initials PVC. So now uh, we're going to create our Cloud SQL instance. Cloud SQL is nothing more than a managed uh, version of MySQL. So the file is here. And now, just let's deploy this WordPress Cloud SQL YAML. So this is the version of WordPress with Cloud SQL set up. And now, now I can have a look at the pods. It's creating a pod for WordPress. This command is basically to, to wait until it's deployed. So I just have created. So the state currently is creation, this container is creating. So once I've created the container, then I need to expose it using a load balancer. So that it gets uh, an external IP. This is something that typically, if you have to configure Kubernetes on a bad cluster, on a bare metal uh, server, you end up, it's quite a lot of work to get it to work. But here in the cloud itself, it just works. Okay, so it's running now. So let's do this next step. I can get the services currently deployed. So all I have to do is wait for an external IP. And again, they provide you a command so you, can, you don't have to keep uh, typing this. So we just wait until it provisions an IP address. Okay, so we have an external IP address. So WordPress is running. 
I'm just going to complete the setup very quickly. Just going to install WordPress. So I've done, I've installed WordPress on a cluster, but you know, you're not going to typically install just one website on a, a Kubernetes engine cluster. You will probably want to install 100. And that's something I will cover on a separate uh, tutorial in a different live stream. So you can see how maybe we'll try to uh, deploy any instances of WordPress at the same time and see how far we can go. So it's done. Here I can log into the Wiki admin as you would normally do. And we can see the default site as well. Yeah, nothing amazing for now. It makes this fancy. Right, so um, it's all for now. I hope uh, you enjoyed this live stream. I, if you if you want to watch more uh, live streams like this, please uh, give it a thumbs up. If you want to uh, be notified when a new live stream comes up or a new video that I upload, please uh, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.